Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Roundtable, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, we are discussing Season 2, Episode 8 of Modern Love. This one is called A Second Embrace, Hearts and Eyes Open. So this episode is one of my favorites in the whole series for Season 2. I think Episode 1, 5, and 8 are my favorites. But this episode is about a couple that has divorced. They have two children, and they tend to think that their relationship was unsuccessful. And it opens with the the why the ex-wife kind of being shocked because her her husband, who was very immature, which was one reason that she ended up getting divorced from him has learned how to cook he's learned how to take care of the girls they actually like his cooking and being at his place because he makes really good food and keeps things very tidy and is very organized and she's like this is not the man that i married because if it was i probably wouldn't have divorced him but anyway one thing leads to another and they end up having a passionate encounter and they decide they want to do that again and the ex-wife is very stressed out about this situation because she doesn't want to have an epic fail. I think that the the crux of the issue is is that she feels that they should have a physical relationship but not an emotional relationship because she's worried that it could burst into flames, so to speak. It kind of reminds me of like, I'm currently reading the Red, Right, and Royal Blue um, book because I'm trying to get um, caught up for the release of the uh, the original Amazon original movie, which comes out on August 11th. And I was kind of curious about the book because it actually made the New York Times bestseller list, I think, uh, two years ago, which I was like, a BL book made the New York Times bestseller list? No offense, I was, I was really surprised. I'm like, I didn't know they made the bestseller list. So I'm not sure how that's going to go. I might throw it up in my in the air and go, poof. <laughs> I'm not really a big fan of BL books because they tend to be a bit, a bit, yeah, we'll just say a bit. But anyway, I thought, you know, I'm going to give it a try because I think the movie will be very good and I kind of like to see how it's similar to the book. But in the, in the, the book, the thing that I find interesting of Red, Right, and Blue is the characters of Alex and Henry. Um, I've been flipping through, like I haven't read the whole thing page by page, but I just kind of go up and sporadically pick certain parts and read them. But in one of the parts that I read, the thing I found interesting was the, the, the two characters you find out have really cared about each other for a long time. Like for the character of Henry, he has liked Alex's character since like they were 12 to 14 years old and he met him in Rio and acted like a total prick to him but he secretly liked him like for this long and for Alex he secretly liked Henry since he was about 12 too but he hasn't been able to figure out how to process that and so when they finally sit down and talk about it I think the funny thing is is I'm going they they sit there and think that they can have a physical relationship without any emotional attachment. And I'm not saying that's not possible because I'm sure in some situations that is possible. But the thing that I think is interesting, and there was actually a video by Christine Northrup on this at one point. I don't know how to go back and research it. But basically it says that you really can't separate your emotions from your physicality in a relationship because it creates this very disproportionate balance and it makes it so that you think you get getting your heart involved but you are which is one of the reasons that we have some disjointed situations that occur in our modern world when it comes to romance and all that jazz but anyway looping back to this episode of modern love so at the end of the day the ex-husband really wants to propose to his ex-wife and get back together because he truly is crazy about her and he really feels bad that he 
didn't do things really the way that he maybe should have the first time around. However, the day that he's getting ready to propose to his ex-wife, his ex-wife finds out she has breast cancer. And she's also totally freaked out about their relationship. She's like, I don't want to remarry you. I don't want to get married to anyone. I'm, I'm going in for breast cancer issues. I'm, I'm totally panicked. So anyway, he starts taking care of the girls while she's in treatments. I think she has a, a partial mastectomy. I'm not sure. And, um, when she comes back from the hospital, he stays at her house. He helps her treat the bandages. He helps with the kids. And she really realizes how he's really there for her. And her her friend from work, who is also her medical, basically the person who calls something's wrong, she's talking to her one day in the park, and she's like, you know, he really is there for me. He's there for the girls. I can't say one thing bad about him, basically. He's like an all-rounder. He's really quite perfect in everything, whereas before he was so dreadful, basically, about everything. And her friend's like, well, the real question is, is do you, do you care about him? Do you love him? Because at the end of the day, you know, you really need to figure out how you feel about him. Well, then we go back to the night when he was going to propose and she left because she was so freaked out and dealing with the breast cancer and all that. And he left her a message. And he basically said in the message, she's like, you know, I totally get that this is kind of sprung on you. I totally get you're dealing with the breast cancer. I totally get you may not want to remarry me because of everything that happened before and how I wasn't that good of a, you know, husband or we wouldn't have gotten divorced. But he's like, I just want you to know that the reason that I don't have anything on on Saturday is because I have quit dating other people because I really don't want to spend my time across the table from a woman. I have no desire to spend the rest of my life with. And he's like, you know, we have our kids together. We have our life history together. We have things that weren't good. We have things that were good. But at the end of the day, if there's one thing that I have figured out through this whole experience called life and having you in it, it's that you are the one who I care about. And whether you get back together with me, whether you don't, whether, you know, we can make this work as friends, whatever. He's like, I want you to know that doesn't change how I feel about you and it will not change. So you need to know that. But at the end of the day, um, she's going in for a new experimental treatment. She puts um, her ex-husband on the list as the person to call if something goes wrong. And as she's getting ready to go in for the treatment, he gives her a ring box because she was looking at a moonstone ring at a market, but it was too small to fit on her hand. So he went and because he had the ring size from her engagement ring, he went and had the moonstone adjusted. He's like, I want you to know this is not a proposal. This is just a, a gift. And I know it's in a ring box, but it was what you were looking at. And she's like, well, she's going all in all, I would be okay with the proposal. He's like, Oh, then there will be a proposals coming. <laughs> and he's like, and I want you to know that the moonstone is great for healing from difficult situations. And that's how this episode ends. But I really, I thought this was a very good episode because it's not like the, the fireworks romances of, you know, most modern day movies. It's basically about how two people that maybe had things go wrong the first time around are deciding to go ahead and try again knowing their failures and also knowing their successes and caring about each other in spite of all that. And I think that's a worthy goal. Check it at the round table. Bye.